Hey, Danny, how you doing, man? Rick and two crows, a thousand years. Ha 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 Always be your grandpa. I'm just really fucking obsessed with crows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. I know. Um, uh, just, just a bit of context um, beforehand. Uh, the reason that we're not doing both episodes this week is because... um. Well, we're mere mortals and it hasn't come out yet, so when it does, we'll review that and then that'll be the season finale. I got it wrong, I thought it was an hour long episode. Honestly, Dan, you've got one job. Listen. One job. Well, I mean, the episode's alright, but it's not worth me scrolling through Reddit. (laughs) Is it an hour? Is it an hour? Do you know what I mean? You know? um, Mm. Uh, But um... we're talking about (laughs) season five, episode nine, and it's called... Forgetting Sarek Marshall. So. Oh, for fuck's sake. Right. Let me Google Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Um, is uh, it a, a uh, breakup movie, I guess? I presume it is. I presume a man has to forget who Sarah Marshall is. Yeah. Uh, after his breakup with Sarah, Peter Bretta decides to go for a Hawaiian vacation. Oh, However, shit. He's in for a rude shock when he finds out that Sarah has checked in at the same resort as his. Is that Russell Brand that's in that? Uh, yes, who plays oh, Aldous Snow, uh, Jason Christ. Siegel, uh, Kristen Bell. I like her; she's good. So yeah. is Mila Kunis. She's in that too. Yeah. Oh well, that's good. I mean, Mila good. Kunis was good in Friends with Benefits. Have you seen that movie? I have seen that. Is that the one with Justin Timberlake? It is. I thought that was a pretty good movie. Yeah, it's alright. It's alright. You know, I don't know <laughs> if it's podcast material, Lewis, but it's you know, it's, <laughs> it's up there. Um, yeah, so uh, this episode uh, was written by uh, Siobhan Thompson and was directed by Kwonju Lim. So, yeah, that's that's halfway through. And uh, st- it is starring <laughs> J- Justin Roiland, Sarah Chalk, Chris Parnell and Spencer Grammer, even though only one of those names, no, two of those names are in the actual show. But because they're title characters, they deserve a wee, a wee spot, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, do you have an opening statement? Um, I do. Crows are really fucking smart, actually. This is a, just a real life thing I know. Cl- crows are really smart. They have like funerals and stuff. Yep. What? Well, there you go. Um, mm. I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, it's um, the stu- the study of it is COVID thanatology. If a crow dies, they all like stand in a circle around it and like call. Um, uh, it's then they leave co- it alone, I think. It's Carlos from oh, that Sorry, amazing, um, <laughs> amazing sci-fi uh, epic known as the Eaters mm, of Light. Mm. It's th- of course the yeah. reason that the crows are going. Ah! Apparently, they're shouting "car," even though no crow has ever sounded like they're, sh- they're shouting "car" in their life. So it's really clever. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So uh, I mean, yeah, I forgot about the sci-fi epic, The Eaters of Light. Yep. Yeah. Uh, genre-defining. I've seen it described as by by some critics. Yep. Dan- um, Daniel Kerr carrying the, <coughs> the, the the torch to the the Olympiad. Um. Yep. Daniel Kerr is completely nailed his performance in that. As Peter a... Capaldi was uh, starstruck to meet him. <laughs> Actually, it was. I was like, oh hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> But um, finally, some good character development, but probably will be undone in the next episode. Yep. <laughs> Woo! Um, Woo! Shall I read out the caption? Yeah, go on then. Two crows, bruh. These guys are mad smart. <coughs> well. Yeah, crows are mad smart. There's this thing. Uh, uh, this is another cr- crows are smart fact. Um, I forget. I've completely fucking forgotten what country it's in. Um, so you're going to have to Google this one for me. Listener. But I am because um, I'm not googling it. <laughs> I think it's um I think it's a European country and they've trained, uh, well they haven't trained crows. It's just wild crows that where they've got these lo- little dispensers where if you put like a cigarette butt in the top, it dispenses a crow treat at the bottom. Oh, so essentially crows have like landed on them, tried to figure it out, and then I think they must have put a had a guy put a. Put a put a cigarette butt in the top, and a crow treat comes out the bottom, and now they just clean up the streets of cigarette butts. Um, wow, which isn't that kind of cool? That is kind of cool because cigarette butts are minging. Um, mm, it's not it's not great. No, definitely <laughs> not. Um, well, should we should we get right in, dive straight into the deep yeah, end? Yeah, some CRQs and all that sort of good stuff. Yeah. Um, 
I'll start us off with Rick and Morty copying the Wheel of Bullshit. I fucking knew it. First they copied <laughs> our art style, then they copied the Wheel of Bullshit. What else are they going to steal from us? The fact that we what we need to do we make routinely shit episodes with no f- <laughs> <laughs> no through line or cohesive plot. Yes, exactly. Would it- what we need to do is we need to get access to the copyright ID system of YouTube. And then just copyright claim all of Rick and Morty's stuff because I think we have we have access to, we have a a right to it. Um, Do we? It's our intellectual property. Uh, yep, it's our art style. It's our um, our wheel of bullshit format. Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't see how they could argue with that. Um, um, the the parallel between Rick and uh, the mental patient is quite. It's just fucking palpable. <laughs> it they, is a bit. Yeah. It could certainly just. Be, that could be another version of Rick, that's managed to get into this reality. It's really. It's really weird how similar they are. Mm, um, mm. But uh, what about you? It any? could be that could be the Rick that's like um, that in the last episode was like a, a memory of a Rick, and now he's in the body of a mental patient or something. Yeah. True. I mean, we've Who seen knows? him. We've seen him do that. Like, inhabit the sort of body of, of another person. Um, true. True. Yeah. It's, it's it's weird the sort of dynamic between Rick and Morty in this episode because, after five seasons, of recruiting your grandson, <laughs> to do some of the most horrible shit that any sentient being could ever do, because he wouldn't tell you that he used your portal gun. <laughs> And filled it with Mountain Dew, which, by the way, is not green. I've seen it. It's it's yellow. It's like Red Bull, right? And okay. Red Bull isn't red either. Um, the horror. Yeah, but using that, it's like, Morty, you're right. This relationship is abusive. You should have told me about the portal guy. Like, oh, my God, they've killed people. They've, they've destroyed entire civilizations. And Morty's like a child. And Rick is now like, suddenly, wow, yeah, I better... I better I better stop all this and give you your own portal gun to do the exact same shit that we've done for mm, five mm. seasons. <laughs> it's weird. I think it's yeah, yeah. It is weird that he's. Oh God, I'm. I feel like I'm. There's there's some kind of a a, a social message that's like clubbing me over the head, but I'm 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 too. We're doing this. We're doing an early morning session, and so I'm not quite awake enough to um <laughs> to to get it out. But I think maybe it's something about um people cutting off people they believe to be toxic but then carrying on smoking do you know yeah. what I mean? there's there's an inherent hypocrisy to that yeah of like oh, i'm gonna change my life by cutting off toxic family members or toxic friends um but also i really need a cigarette do you know what i mean yeah so maybe that's sort of what it's getting at is that the the destructive thing in rick and morty's relationship is that it's what they do together really yeah if if, the, if their relationship wasn't so strained by like genocide then they would be able to just, you know, grandson and and granddad just like, watch TV, yep. eat some food. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like they're not. It doesn't have to be this insane relationship. Absolutely, they've sort of chosen to make it as so. Yeah, and why didn't we see Beth's reaction to him leaving? Like the whole show has been about Beth, like being terrified of like her dad sort of abandoning them. Mm. But and now oh he wait, is doing for some crows. Well, I suppose that was resolved at the end of season four, wasn't it? With Space Beth, and they were like, yeah, we don't really need you anymore. And you're a low-status character now. So maybe she she's sort of got over that, I guess. Um, Beth is a low-status character. No, 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 no. Uh, Rick, who's, like, oh, who's okay, like, right. sunk low because he, like, with the clone thing and stuff. Mm, mm. Um, but who knows? Damn. Yeah. Who knows? Hard to say. <laughs> maybe we'll find out next episode <gasps> maybe we will what's the next episode called so we can complain about that uh, um, Rick Mar- Mar- Rick Marai Jack oh like Samurai Jack yeah why yeah, isn't it Samurai. Rick Marai Jerry what about you dropping the ball adult swim look what the fuck <laughs> uh, Samurai Jack when the evil shape-shifting wizard Aku sends the young Samurai Jack into a dystopian future he must find a portal back to his own time to undo Aku's de- destruction and defeat him. Wow. Um, so it sounds like it's it's going to be Rick slash Morty have to come back in time. Well, not back in time because they don't do that. Have to come back and resolve their toxic relationship or something. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of there's a lot of potential, I suppose. What do you think about the prospect of um, evil Morty showing up? Um. I don't, 
I don't know. I think, <laughs> was, I think it, the only in- instance in which I would find it interesting would be a situation in which Rick dies in this reality that we're following. Presuming this reality we're following this season is one reality. Yeah. If Rick sort of dies in space and Morty finds out about it through some third-hand medium, it's like, oh, shit. Rick's dead. It's like it's like in um, Doctor Who when the Doctor abandons a companion, yeah, and then they're just like broken people forever because yeah, it's true. just so insane. No, no, I think that that's probably a good way to go. Or maybe because I have a theory, Lewis, I have a hot button. Ooh, a hot the- theory. Yeah, I see. See when more take it out of the oven. Take it out of the yep. oven. Put it on the counter. Blow go. the steam off it and tell me the theory. <sighs> fan that. Fan that. Um, I think. That our Morty will develop into evil Morty. Okay. With, okay. With the because this episode really sold it for me. I'm not the first person to make this theory. Okay, so don't even let. It's not even yours. What the fuck? Okay, I admit it. I'm stealing it from that guy at Film Theory or whatever it is, right? But okay. When I saw Morty's hand be chopped off, I thought, oh, mm. okay. So this is when Morty starts getting all cybernetic, like Rick. And sort of takes the first steps to becoming who we know Evil Morty to be. I thought that was... But no, he he gets his hand back, which is kind of shit, I guess. (laughs) It would have been so cool to actually deal with the consequences of your actions, I guess. But Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, It would have been good to to give him a a robot hand, because that's... Oh, don't get me wrong. It's obviously not direct consequences like, oh, now Morty has to deal with a, a, a more difficult life because he hasn't got a hand. Yeah. It would have been good to see, yeah, more, uh, Morty's sort of metamorphosis sort of thing. Yeah. It um, Maybe he goes into some kind of, like, chrysalis and he comes out with a robot hand. Or a, Do you know what I mean? An, that would have been interesting. And an eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> um. So that fucked me up, that did. The, the, I remember the original reveal when he takes off the eye patch and he pushes the cables back into his eye. Yeah. I just, I remember thinking at the time, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> the cable's just in his skull yeah. now. So that's why. Every time, every time I think about Evil Morty, I can't escape that because that's just so disgusting to me. Yeah. I, I just can't escape it. It's horrible. No, absolutely. I mean, it's like that, that sort of fits with the cybernetic technology, you know? Um, I suppose it does, I. Yeah, I. <laughs> wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. And then the reveal that they had for him in season three was just out of nowhere, and it worked like perfectly. It was so, like, it was it's such good political commentary, and like had such mm. a big reveal at the end, and it was like, oh my god. And then they teased us with season three, episode ten, saying, uh, "Rick and Morty meet the president," and. Evil Morty had become yeah. the predator. Like, oh fuck! I mean, I love Keith David, but fuck. Um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll finally get to see him again. Maybe, maybe. But I doubt what, it. What do you think? If you were to put odds on it, if you were a if you were a bookie, what what would you say? <sighs> I don't know because I know like I'd like to give them a bit of credit and think they have to build up to it a bit more than this, like mm. shoehorning in a big villain at the end of the. TV show. Maybe if it's like you know the end credit sequence like, you know mm-hmm. how you had like Mr. Poopy Butthole and stuff like that like maybe if ooh it... ooh oh hopefully you didn't just waste your life <laughs> I did, I did um, that's but... all I do Mr. Poopy Butthole <laughs> what about your father Mr. why do people do that in films when, when you say um Hello, Mr. Uh, uh, Poopy Butthole. Wait, it's Jim. Mr. Poopy Butthole was my father. Like, why did... Mm, that is a bit of an odd one. Yeah, it's so weird. It happens all the time, but I'm digressing. Yeah, so, I don't really get it. So maybe at the end sequence, he sort of like, oh, hello, there, and speaks to the camera and tells you <laughs> why plastic in the ocean is a terrible thing and it needs to be stopped. Mm-hmm. S- sponsored by... Greta Thunberg. Fossil fuels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows indeed? Yeah. I do not know. Yeah. No, well, I, I don't know either. Um, um I, I can't even remember what the B story was. Oh, yeah, it was the mental patient. So, I don't... 
This portal fluid seems to be very inconsistent in what it does. Because, do you remember in the episode... I think that was the, 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 the Evil Morty episode, where um, that guy was making counterfeit portal fluid, and he, he sprayed it on a wall, and then it, like, melted him. Yeah. Um, so, what is different about this portal fluid? Because Morty just made it in a garage. It's not some kind of special yeah. artisanal blend of micro-ingredients. Do you know what I mean? I don't... What's happened there? Yeah, I mean, it's... You're abs- I didn't even think of that. Maybe it's a different universe, so the portal fluid... Like, li- it's just there like is li- Sprite. There is it. literally no criticism that you can levy at this show without them saying, well, it might have been a different universe. You don't fucking know. Mm. It's the mm. ultimate get-out-of-jail-free card. Um, no, it isn't. The ultimate get out of jail free card is uh, the Doctor Who with regeneration energy. Yeah, true. It. Um, oh, why is his hair different in that episode? Oh, he regenerated his hair. It's okay. He sprayed regeneration <laughs> particles over his hair, and now he's he's fine again. Yep, that could be like a, a time lord sort of um, links, like just regeneration spray for men and women and anything in between only. You know, like just just. Mm as broad as possible and then when the communist uprising takes place on Gallifrey but they, right. s- they still have lords and somehow Lord President is like a thing <laughs> so that's so antithetical to I think you're getting your politics there mixed up Russell um, but yeah I I um, I think this is a very dark and compelling story this episode um, for Gooby the Trash person. It is. You Gooby know. the Trash. What is it? Gooby the Trash Gooba or something. Yeah, something like that. Um, something. I love him. He's great. <laughs> yep. Um, I love trash. It's so good. I think that it's a regular sort of breaking bad, you know? Like, he's think? he's got a degree at Harvard and he's like a doctor. And then Rick shows up with a, a an M&M hat and a sort of... Yes, yeah, science bitch type thing, and he's like, "I'm gonna eat trash from now on." And his wife is like, Skylar, and um, is is the, sh- the is Mastercard is the one we don't use, Gooby Gooba. <laughs> and as the show goes on, she's like, "Because I'm darker than you and the audience ever thought." Like, <laughs> do you ever see that episode of Family Guy? I did. Yeah. I'm gonna help you kill that cop because I'm darker than you and the audience ever thought. What a twist. <laughs> so, uh, what, to, to, to be honest with you, when you said um, that Gooby Gooberson or whatever had a degree from Harvard, I thought you were going to like link it to Suits somehow, because that's oh. like, a big thing in Suits, which apparently I'm watching a lot of at the minute. Um, and, yeah, it was like, oh, he's got a law degree from Harvard, and then Rick and Morty and Suits are going to have a crossover. <laughs> suits, which I think has been ended for a few years. Yes. I think it, it ended. It's definitely done, I think. Um... I think it's sort of when when Meghan Markle got married to Big Big Hazer, um, I think it sort of went downhill a wee bit, and fans sort of stopped watching as much. I think. I mean, I could just be literally making that up. Um, no, but who knows? It's all right. I don't, I never know what I'm talking about. And yet somehow <laughs> people listen to the podcast. Have you got any more CRQs, CRSs, CRJs? Um. No, I mean, other than Evil Morty, what do you think's going to happen in the season finale? I've got no idea. I, 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 I would like to see... It's annoying because Rick has had character development now, but I kind of don't want him to. Yeah. Because Rick's character development feels unearned because it happens so quickly. I want to see character development from the other members of the Smith family. Yeah. No, I Like agree. I said at the start of the season, I want to see some development from Summer of all of them, I think that would be an interesting thing to see, to see her have this sort of cosmic realisation of nothing I do matters sort of thing. Yeah. I think it's... I'd like to see that, because at the minute she's still very sort of... um, Everything she does matters, everything she does is important and all the rest of it, but no. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see that, but well, if if I'm so lucky, I would like to see that. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd sort of like to see the family sort of fall out with Rick, and eventually just sort of give him up, and he Mm. just sort of is... Like, cause he's, I, I mean, he's a good character and all that, but he's irredeemable <laughs> at yes, this point. 100%. You know, he's not a very good person. Neither's Morty though, because they've all sort of none of them are good people. I guess, like they've all mm-hmm. got their incredibly weird flaws. Um, 
but maybe if they start sort of realising how bad this is and they sort of take the steps to leave, I, d- I don't think that'll happen because we've got 70 episodes left of this. Or 60 mm, now, no. I guess. Oh yeah, a good point. Yeah, but I guess we'll see. Um, Other than that, I think I'm done. I think I think I'm kind of done too, which is a bit yeah. a bit insane. Yeah, maybe that's um, maybe that's why they had a season finale to sort of let oh the the boys over at shouting into the void won't have much to talk about this episode, <laughs> so we better release the, se- the season finale at the exact same time. Um, <laughs> Go on. Um, yeah, have we got a closing statement then? Yeah. Uh, what would you name the two crows? Um, I would go for what Odin called his crows, um, Higen and Munin, I think it was, something like that, thought and memory. Oh, that would be my go-to. What I, about you? I haven't even thought about that. Maybe that's foreshadowing an eye patch, eh? Eh? Oh, 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 oh. Um, uh, Croceus and Bicius. <laughs> I think we're going to say Croceus and Broceus. <laughs> I mean, that would be like calling a human humanus and noses. <laughs> I suppose it's that's it's kind of how things are named in the Rick and Morty universe. It's just a collection of sounds. Yeah. It's, um, it's, which I do quite like, actually. It's very adjective-based, like the, the alien mm. species in Rick and Morty. Um, but yeah, I think, I, think I'm, I think we're finished. Uh, I haven't done a, CR, uh, a closing statement. No, I so... think we're I think we're done. Um, um, thank okay, you. Then we're done. Yeah. No, <laughs> go on, go on. Um, I want to see the rest of the family's reaction to Rick leaving. That's the only thing I want from the finale episode. I don't know if it's going to happen because I haven't watched the finale episode, but that is what I would like to see. Um, so, fingers crossed, I see that. Yeah, we're all we're all praying. <laughs> <laughs> on my behalf. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna listen. I'm not even going to sleep the night because it's that harrowing. Um, but yeah, that was um, Season 5, Episode 9 of Rick and Morty. Uh, are you ready for some very uh, vicious capitalist shilling, Lewis? I am ready for capitalism. Um, we all have link trees. Uh, Lewis's link tree is linktr.ee slash lewis underscore brindley. Mine's is slash ohiram. And the podcast is slash shouting into the void. There you will find our socials, our Instagram, our YouTube, our Facebook. Go have a look. Give us a like. Give us a follow. And uh, yeah, stick around for some awesome content. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! Uh, we have a PayPal donate button. Uh, so anything you can spare, anything at all, would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we also have Patreon, and we want to take the opportunity, as we do every week, to thank our wonderful, wonderful patrons. Uh, Chloe. Thank you. Darius. Thank you. Peter. Thank you. Aditya. Thank you. Natalie. Thank you. And Doogie. Thank you. One and all, you make the show possible even little episodes like this, um, you absolutely make the show possible and you allow us to think at great length about Rick and Morty and all the assorted other bits of stuff that are adjacent to it. So thank you very, very much for that. Yes, thank you. Um, we also have merch on Teespring and Redbubble. Uh, we sell tote bags, jumpers, uh, socks, I uh, forgot socks, um, uh, oh, nice. stickers, mugs, go over. See what you like. Get yourself something nice, because Christmas is is r- f- months away. So you know, um, get yourself ready <laughs> for that. Christmas is months away, but it pays to be prepared. True. Just let mm. Eden uh, Baden Powell is that Baden Powell uh, said. Yeah, he founded the Scouts, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah. And uh, last but certainly not least, we are partnered with an amazing company called Number 12 Crochet Avenue. And Lewis is going to say some wonderful things about them, all of which are true. Indeed I am. Number 12 Crochet Avenue is a wonderful company run by my wonderful wife, in which they crochet and they're very, very good at it. Um, If you would like to keep up to date with all the bits and bobs that they're doing and bless your Instagram feed with some aesthetically pleasing content, you can do that. You can go to at Number 12 Crochet Avenue on Instagram and you can get up to date with everything that's going on. You can get all the happening things. The happening things. The happening things. Amaze, yeah. Amazing. I'm bringing balls. that term back from whenever it was destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it was purged. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. So um, that's us, I believe. It um, is. 
Yeah, so we'll do the big shouty thing at the, <laughs> next week then. Yeah, we will. Uh, Keep putting um, it off. Yeah. We'll do the big shouty thing for the next episode of Doctor Who. We'll have it all do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, well, f- folks, thanks for listening, watching, and we will see you, hear you, smell you, uh, replace you with two birds <laughs> next time. Indeed we will. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.